and talk about today's lesson. So uh, working in, and let me double check here. I'm pretty sure that this has been assigned. Um, in RLA reading, um, advanced affixes and roots. So something we've looked at before uh, and in helping us understand uh, and defining words. So less about spelling today, but making sure that we understand, um, you know, what words mean and how do we, uh, how we do that with roots and affixes. And, you know, I, I just talked about this in social studies too, with words like demos, meaning uh, a Greek word, uh, meaning the common people. Uh, and we attach various, uh, um, uh, suffixes to that in particular, uh, or occasionally a, a prefix um, to modify the meaning. So, you know, uh, common people, um, U.S. Census Bureau hires demographers, uh, which are, um, you know, just like it sounds, that study people, uh, that study particularly, uh, you know, populations and things like that. So uh, um, you're going to come to see that there's a lot of familiar ground that we can um, learn a lot about um, the um, different meanings of words just based on their roots and what we add to them to make new words. So let's take a look at lesson. Hi, this is Leonard. Are you ready to study advanced affixes and roots? This lesson will help you expand your knowledge of prefixes, suffixes, and roots. All right, let's take a look here. When I was younger, my friends and I liked to play with words. Sometimes we'd write rap lyrics with wordplay in them. We'd play around with different word meanings, spellings, and sounds. Take a look at this lyric by Lil Wayne. Real G's move in silence like lasagna. See, he's playing with the silent G spelling in lasagna. At one point, my friends and I were competing to see who could use the longest words and lyrics. Here's one that I found. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. It's one of the longest words in English. I wanted to see if I could really use it, and not just as a joke. That meant understanding what it meant. When you start to take it apart, you can see that one of the reasons it's so long is that it's made up of a lot of prefixes and roots. Anti meaning against, dis meaning not or away from, establish meaning to set up an organization, meant creating a noun, Aryan meaning someone with a set of beliefs as in vegetarian, ism meaning a general principle or practice such as vegetarianism. Altogether, it means being against the principle of taking away government support of an established church, even though nowadays it's mostly used only as an example of a long word. You can see how the prefixes and suffixes add meaning. Even though you need some context to understand the word, knowing the prefixes, suffixes, and root helps. That's what you'll learn about in this lesson. Now... <laughs> As he mentioned, you know, it's one of the longest words in the English language. So very rarely are you going to have more than one suffix or prefix attached to a root. Um, that does happen. But um, often, you know, it'll just be maybe a suffix or a prefix or maybe the combination of, of a suffix and prefix. Every once in a while, you may see something that's a little more complex than that. One strategy that can help you learn prefixes, suffixes, and roots is putting them in groups. I'm going to show you how to do it with prefixes. Take a look at these prefixes. Anti, meaning before, as in anteroom. E, 
X, meaning out, as in eject or exhale. Four, meaning before, as in forehead. M, in, meaning in, as in embed or inset. Multi, meaning many, as in multi-use. Omni, meaning all, as in omnipotent. Out, oh. meaning outside or far away from, as in outdoors. Pan. So, uh, you know, one thing to mention here, particularly with the first one, you know, we've talked about uh, confused words. You have anti before, right? So we encountered this before we talked about the antebellum period uh, in, in the United States, right? Before the Civil War. So bellum being hostile or uh, war, uh, antebellum. Anti, A-N-T-I, is a different prefix that we'll talk about in a little bit, which means basically against something. So there's anti and anti. So those, when it comes to spelling and things, that are, are, you know, easy to confuse. And meaning all, as in pandemic. Poly, meaning many, as in polygon. Post, meaning after, as in postpone. Pre, meaning before, as in precaution. How would you put these prefixes in groups? Well, I see a number of them that can mean before. Pre, anti, for. There are also a few that mean many. Multi, poly. These prefixes mean out. E, X, out. These mean all. Omni, pan. Let's see. The prefixes meaning all or many are used in a sort of similar way. They are a little different, but they both indicate a lot. So, I could group all and many together. Many, multi, poly, all, omni, pan. I also see some opposites. I can associate prefixes meaning in and out. In, in, m, out, e, x, out. I can also associate before and after. Before. Pre, anti, for, after, post. By grouping the prefixes and thinking about their meanings, I can remember them better. I can build relationships between them. In the resources, you will find a study sheet of prefixes. Try making your own groups with these prefixes. What prefixes are related to each other? How are they related? Are they used in similar words or antonyms? When do you use one and not the other? Um, you know, another way to sort of think about them is typically we know at least one word uh, that uh, we can we can think about that we have a good grasp on that uses one of these prefixes. So as I mentioned with anti antebellum, uh, <clears throat> which you know is uh, before the war. Um, just you know, a couple other examples here. Uh, pan. So like you said, pandemic, right? So there's an epidemic. Um, but if it turns to a pandemic, means that it's 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 everywhere. So it's all uh, poly. Um, tons of words that use that. A lot of times, uh, when it comes to individual, we'll call them a polymath, which means that they have a, a very broad uh, knowledge of of multiple sort of disciplines. A polyglot knows multiple languages, so many languages. Um, you know. Uh, Omni has a number of, of uh, you know, omnipresent. Uh, a lot of times we talk about gods and deities. We think of them as being omniscient, being all-knowing, or omnipresent, being everywhere at once, uh, things like that. So that's when it's often, we often see omni being used. Let's keep going here. Drag each prefix into the matching category. We have a whole bunch of these. So um, if you already have your lesson open, uh, if you want to kind of move along with me here, because um, this actually gets quite detailed um, and it could actually take a while. So we'll kind of try to move through them so we can get to our practice questions. Um, but, you know, think about a word 
that uses that prefix as we're moving them into our spot. So A, right, is not or without. Good job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. And so apolitical means, you know, without politics, right? Somebody's apolitical. They don't really care about pol uh, politics. Amoral, right, means you have a lack of morals without morals. Um, and also meaning not or without. Good job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. Can't think of a word that has an as its prefix. I've drawn a blank. We'll come back to that one. Non, also without, right? We, we can pretty much see that. Good job. Um, That's the right meaning for this prefix. Non-fat yogurt or, you know, something like that. Uh, it's used probably a lot more than the others. A lot of times when it comes to things like, uh, you know, food labels and things like that, we'll, we'll, we'll see it. So intra means between or middle. Now, there's a little Good bit job. of issue here. That's the right meaning for this prefix. <laughs> which we'll, we'll talk about because you're going to see it. But intra uh yeah go ahead what channel are we doing is it reading our language yeah so i just th this is the first part of, of of the lesson there's still the the practice questions at the end so if you have it open you know you can just follow along with me as I'm, I'm going through them um and then we'll still kind of break and do the 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 practice questions at the end like i said this this lesson is a little bit different because oh. it's got a oh, lot okay. of exercises up front um, and we could also just skip through them, but I think this is kind of a good way to show you some of these different prefixes and talk about them a little bit. So um, intra, there's inter and intra. When something is intra, it's typically between or middle. Intrastate travel means you're traveling within the state, right? Between the state. Uh, interstate means you're traveling yeah. abroad, right? Um, so that's that's one way to look at it. Um, IR, ear, right? So not or without, irregular. That's the right meaning for this. Uh, yeah, yeah. So irregular, right? Not being regular. Um, irresponsible, right? Without responsibility, not, not responsible, irresponsible. Extra, beyond, right? If something beyond. Is, extraterrestrial job. that's the right meaning for so this prefix beyond our planet right when we think of terra or terrestrial we're thinking about something that's dealing with earth or ground if it's extraterrestrial it's not from the earth um extra try to think ultra. of another one. ultra also beyond right? yeah so Good job. that's the right meaning um, for this prefix some of these, again, you know, you use less often. I'm trying to think of a word. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Ultra light, uh, which is a type of very lightweight aircraft. So it's beyond just light. It's ultra light. Para, also beyond. So paranormal, right? Uh, Good job. Often, uh, That's the right meaning for this prefix. In terms of uh, uh, um, spirits or, you know, odd uh, uh, encounters um, that could be, you know, of a, of, a, of, a, of a haunted nature and things like that. They'll say it's paranormal, right? So it's beyond a, a normal experience, paranormal experience. Um, paramilitary, uh, it's used. Uh, so... A paramilitary force is not quite a military force, um, so it's beyond the military, but they have sort of a look uh, and, and, and a similar purpose as the military. Hyper, also beyond, right? Hyperactive. Good job. Um, hypertensive, right? If you have a problem with high blood pressure. Um, hyper extended. So if you have a, a joint that you hyper extend, you may risk injury because it's going beyond the actual range of motion that it should be. 
mid, um, right between or middle. Good job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. um, Midwest, right in the United States. We consider the middle of the United States, the Midwest. Uh, the um, enter. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Enter can also be considered between or Good middle. Job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. Often, though, it means across. So, intergalactic, meaning you're traveling across galaxies. International, meaning you're going across um, uh, nations, but it can also be between or middle. So I want to kind of point that out. Intra is usually used in the middle or between. So if I'm traveling, you know, within a state, I'll say intrastate. If I'm traveling beyond the state through multiple states, I say interstate travel, right? So that's a good way to remember it was with the interstate system we talked about, right? It connects all of the states together on highways. So you're traveling across multiple states. Anti, <laughs> finally, we have our first against. against job. Yeah. That's the right meaning for this prefix. Antibiotics, right? If you have a bacterial infection, doctor might prescribe you antibiotics. If you have a viral infection, they might give you antiviral medication against the virus. Uh, anti-fascist, right, is a movement against fascism, things like that. Contra, also is against good job that's the right meaning for this prefix uh contradict right so if you contradict somebody you're saying something that is an uh, against them or opposed to them um you know you're contradicting their their evidence or their opinion or something like that and we'll keep going here like i said this is kind of in depth drag each word to its correct meaning so here it's simply you know, looking at our uh, uh, prefix um, and thinking about the, the entire word there, how those two relate uh, to get a definition. So example I used earlier, um, a moral right is without a sense of right or wrong, right? Lacking job. morals That's the without correct definition. morals. Um, extract, right? To remove... Yeah. Or take out, right? Good job. That's the correct definition. Um, Inter. Yeah. Contraindicate. So that's a word that we don't, you know, you probably don't see very often, but, right, to be evidence against using something. So. Good job. That's the correct definition. If you have an indication of something, right, that's going to uh, be evidence for something. If it's contraindication, it's going to be evidence against something. Um, foresight, right? So the ability to predict something about the future. That's the correct definition. And then interact leaves, right, to act Good back job. and that's forth the correct with definition. each other. So back and forth, enter, um, which is another good way to look at enter. Um, well, let's see. Lost much. Oh, not remember what I was going to say. Uh, this is a good example of using process of elimination too, right? This is something that that is a test taking skill. You could definitely benefit from when it comes time to you know take your GED test. Um, you know. You might have, be really sort of in the weeds and, and, and not have a good, strong feeling about one of the words. So you start working around that one by eliminating, you know, the other choices, right? Until you're left with maybe one or two choices, and then you can start filling in. Um, so, you know, a word like contraindicate, you might not be familiar with that, but you might be more familiar with extract. So you move that into the right place first uh, and then start eliminating um, the options there. So process of elimination is a great skill, uh, uh, test taking each prefix skill. into the matching category. Hemi, half, right? Hemisphere. Good job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. So we divide up the earth into hemispheres, the Western hemisphere, uh, or, 
you know, probably more we hear about the northern hemisphere right above the equator and then the southern hemisphere is below the equator. But, you know, uh, uh, the half of anything there. Um, here's one I've actually talked about off and on through the course of, of you know, language arts and social studies is, is MAL or MAL, um, which is wrong, bad, or false. Good right? job. That's the right meaning for um, this prefix. Malignant, right? If you have a tumor uh, and it's malignant, right, then it's, it's, it's typically cancer. Um, uh, malevolent, uh, if, a, if a ruler is malevolent, they have a, a bad uh, or evil nature. Um, malfeasance is kind of the same thing. Um, try to think of another mal word. Ah, that's enough examples. Pseudo, also wrong, bad, or false. Good job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. You know, mal or mal is used in a much more intense or, or serious way, right? If, if somebody is malicious or something like that. Pseudo, less wrong or bad, but more false. Um, a pseudonym, right, is uh, if you're an author, you may use a pseudonym, which is a false name that you, you write under, right? Um, um, and then pseudo is often attached to all kinds of words uh, as, as a means to sort of say it's, it's not quite right or it's kind of false. Um, Keiko. Now that's one you don't see very often either. And I can only think of one word. Good job. That's the right uh, meaning for this prefix. C-A-C-O like that. It's cacophony, which is a, a loud and chaotic noise or a, 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 uh, a loud uh, uh, whole sort of uh, set of disruptive sounds, right? Like a cacophony, um, like symphony right you have that same ending with the, the phony uh to represent sound but in cacophony it's, like, it's sort of like chaos uh semi semi so that is half as well um good job that's the right meaning for this prefix try to think of a good example of um semi or semi I've seen it so many times and, and now I'm, I'm stuck on hemisphere. Um, oh, well, come back to it. Um, circum. So circum is with or around. Um, circumference. Job. That's the right circle. meaning for this prefix. Right. That is the, the, the uh, measurement of, of the entire you know, out or the, the entirety of the circle, the line of the circle. Uh, circumnavigate, they'll use, you know, if you're going around the world uh, to circumnavigate the world. Um, circumference, you know, those, that's uh, uh, typically where you see it when it has to do with something spherical a lot of times. Um, let's see, sin. Also with or around. As Good well. job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. All I can think of is like synthetic, but that is doesn't seem to synthesize. Oh, that's a good one. Synthesize. Yeah. So if you're synthesizing something, you're combining uh, multiple components uh, to create something new. Uh, if you're synthesizing data, Right, you're collecting a bunch of different data and you're bringing it together. So that's with something. Um, P E R per uh, is also across or through. Good job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. Per. Um. perform 
Not sure how that would really work. I have to come back. We'll probably see an example of how they use that. Um, again, I can think of a lot of, of, of words, but not necessarily that well explain the use of that in the in the the prefix. Um, trans. So trans is um, also across or through. Good job. That's the right meaning for this prefix. Transport. Uh, right. If you are are moving something through or across to a new area, transcontinental. Um, there used to be, uh, air, uh, you know, so if you're flying across continents, um, transnational, right, you're moving across the nation. Um, so there you go, across or through. Transmission in your car is transferring power from your engine, basically, to your wheels. Um, there's a lot else going on there, but that's sort of the idea there. MIS, miss, which is... Oh, uh, that's also wrong or bad, right? Um, Good job. That's the right meaning for this. Guided, right? So badly guided, misplaced. I've badly placed something, so I can't find it. Uh, misunderstood, right? If I'm wrongly understood, there's a lot of examples there. D Y S also wrong, bad, or false dystopian good job uh, that's the right uh, meaning for this prefix world um writers uh in, in few, you know uh, science fiction writers will often talk about a dystopian uh, uh future um where you know things are really bad you know the, the robots have taken over or there's been a nuclear holocaust or something or zombie attack you know it, it dystopian uh means a, 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 a instead of a utopia which is uh, where, you know, everything's great, you know, and hunky dory and everybody gets along. Dystopian future is something where something really bad has happened. Uh, dysfunctional, right? Uh, if <laughs> you have a dysfunctional family, nobody's getting along or, or you know, there's other types of issues. Um, so that's bad. Um, yeah, there's, there, you know, again, there's, there's a whole bunch. I'm thinking of what's, what's the, what's the, uh, I keep seeing ads on TV for a drug. Uh, actually, there's several, I think, that treats tardive dyskinesia. Uh, and dyskinesia is a, uh, a, a series of sort of like random uh, movements or tics that you can develop if you're on um, antidepressants and other types of drugs for a very long time, uh, particularly with like antidepressants and stuff. And that treats that. So kinesia means movement. Dyskinesia means a, a bad movement. Um, M, E, M is with or around. Empower, right? With power. Employ, with work. Um, uh, you know, again, there's, there's, there's a bunch you could, you could look at there. Co uh, is with or around so uh co-worker right you're with or around your co-workers good job that's um, the right meaning for this prefix codependent um if you're dependent on somebody you're both dependent on each other you know you're with each other um all right it's helpful to group suffixes Suffix. by parts of speech and then by meaning some parts of speech like adverbs are only formed with a few suffixes You'll find that the most suffixes are used for nouns, like these. Assy, state, or quality, as in democracy or piracy. Al, action or process, as in denial or criminal. Archy, rule or government, as in hierarchy or monarchy. Ear, one who does a task, such as engineer or volunteer. Mint. Condition, as in argument or entertainment. Moni, action, state, or quality, as in ceremony or matrimony. Ness, state of being, as in happiness or loneliness. Or, er, 
one who does a job, as in sailor or teacher. Stir, one who does something, as in trickster or gangster. Th, state or quality, as in depth or strength. Shun, shun, state of being or doing, as in confusion or action. You can group some suffixes together in a useful way, such as endings for people who do certain tasks. All right, I don't Ear, know if we, this is or, sort of the same er, as, you know, grouping stir. together the, the prefixes. Many of the suffixes are similar, though. So, and I, brainstorm words we'll that group to... of all of them would be pretty large. Another strategy might help. Here's another technique to help you expand your There's... vocabulary with suffixes, and it can help for prefixes and roots, too. It's simple. Choose a suffix and brainstorm words that have that ending. But you can do the same with You can prefixes. look up additional words, but make sure you understand their meaning. Here's an example. The al ending forms nouns that often show an action or a process. Even though it's on the nouns list, it also forms similar adjectives. For example, criminal can be a noun meaning one who commits crimes. It's also an adjective that describes something as against the law. You could perform a criminal act. I'll include both adjectives and nouns on my list of example words. Here are some words I brainstormed. Deny plus al is denial. Crime plus al is criminal. Navy plus al is naval. Skeleton plus al is skeletal. Sign plus al is signal. If you can't think of any more words, then you can just research to find them. Remember that some words end in the letters A, L, coincidentally. So try to look for words that use the suffix. Here are a few more examples. Bride plus al is bridal. Spine plus al is spinal. Flower plus al is floral. Tribe plus al is tribal. You can find even more examples with a little research because this is a very common suffix, but you might notice that it's more common for adjectives. Noticing patterns like that can help you understand the suffix better. Some other suffixes, such as moni, will have fewer examples, and some of them will be less familiar. For example, you might come across acrimony. What does that mean? The root acri means bitter tasting or smelling. So acrimony means bitterness. Learning the word parts and meaning will help you with other words. For example, you might guess that acrid means bitter. You can find a larger list of suffixes in the resources. Use them to try this learning strategy. I also have the suffixes up on, there's the, the resource page up here that I'll, I'll post on Google Classroom as well for easier access. Um, but yeah, you know, there's, there's some, again, that you're going to be able to immediately associate with words. But what you mentioned here too is, is, is kind of important. You know, you can turn this the thing about suffixes and prefixes, whatever the affix is that you're adding, you're modifying the world, the word. And you may also be changing the part of speech. So um, like he said here, you know, with tribe, for example, I use that for example, tribe, that's a noun, right? Uh, it could be a group of, you know, explain a group of people. Um, tribal, you know, is again, sort of like the action of or, or the process. Um, so uh, uh, a tribal beat, like a, a rhythmic beat or something like that. There's tribal metal and heavy metal. There's groups that, that, that use a lot of, a lot of percussion and stuff in, in their, in their music. So it's called tribal metal, right? So turning it into an adjective. So that's something that uh, suffixes and prefixes can do, particularly with suffixes. Drag each beginning to a suffix that makes an adjective. Okay, so here, um, distaste becomes distasteful. Good job. Distasteful means unpleasant, unlikable, or disgusting. Yeah, and so adding distasteful basically means full of distaste. Uh, or, uh, okay, omni, um, ominous, there we go. So, good job. Ominous means threatening or making it appear that something bad is going to happen. It's related to the word omen. 
Right. So, yeah, exactly. It's uh, when you put that together with the OUS, your um, dietary. Good job. Dietary. dietary means relating to a diet. Right. So diet is a noun. It's what we eat. Uh, everybody is on a diet, whether you're, whether you're trying to cut calories or not, whatever you eat, right, during a day, that has been your diet. Um, that word's kind of been modified to, you know, talk about people who, who are restricting, you know, their caloric intake to lose weight. But diet represents everything that you eat, your nutrition. Dietary, right, is changing the idea of that word. So it's no longer just a noun. It's becoming an adjective. So uh, to meet my dietary needs, right, I need a zillion grams of protein a day or whatever. So, you know, you can see how that's changing. It still means related to a diet, um, but, um, you know, as dietary of or related to a diet, not just the noun itself. Um, erratic. Erratic. Yeah. Good job. Erratic means moving unevenly or unpredictable. It's related to the word error. Yeah, so E-R-R, -R, uh, that sort of root, you will see basically always means sort of uh, in error uh, or, or incorrectly. Um, so like erroneous, right? Just means in error. Um, so here adding the IC to it means moving in. IC is, a, you know, often is related to movement, um, kinetic, right? Kinetic energy, meaning you know, the movement of, 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 of an object. Um, so that's one way to look at it too. Um, audible, A-U-D. Right, a u a u d uh, often is to, uh, talking about sound. Good job. Audible means to be heard. The root odd or adi has to do with sound. Right. So if something is audible, it means that you can hear it. Um, auditory canal. Right. That is the the the, the basically the the hole traveling into your inner ear. Um, so if it's auditory, audible audio right our audio system in our vehicles what have you all related to sound stand off it's our last one so we know where that goes good job standoffish means tending to be distant okay so moving along drag each suffix into the matching category <laughs> all right so another another set here so uh, i f i i f y f i um Verb as to make. Good job. That's the right meaning for this suffix. So um, certify, right? I make certain of something, certifying it. Deify, making someone or something into a god, right? Or a spirit, deify. Um, fortify. One. Verify. Yeah, that's a good one. To, to um, uh, you know, make, again, sort of like certify. Verify uh, um, is to make sure something is, is, is has been checked. Um, there's not much trying to think of there. Verify, certify, deify, um, exemplify to make an example of, right? Um, and then M E N T is to make into a noun. So you're turning another part Good of job. speech. That's the right meaning for this suffix. Um, Try to think here. Government. Yeah, there you go. Right to govern. Right is a verb, um, but government is the the body that governs. It's a great example. Um, and we talked about that too, right? With that n m e n t sound uh, that they kind of run together. Um, age or age, depending on uh, the pronunciation, also makes something into a noun. So, um, good job. That's the right meaning for this suffix. Age, let me take a message. Message. Yeah, that'll work. Um, I'll try to think of what the root. Well, mess would be the root. Let me think here. 
Um, or a garage. See, I think that might just be a standalone word. Let me let me double check on that. They're probably got. I think we'll have an example here probably coming up um, in the future here. That would you know again some of these are are you know a little harder to to see than others. Ents e n c e also makes a noun. Um, permanence, right? So it's in a permanent. Yeah, permanence. Um, transcendence. Um, so if something is, uh, you know, trans, that's, that's, you know, the prefix of moving across something, uh, and, and transcending also. So transcendence is actually a noun for that type of activity. Um, en is, uh, also makes a verb. Oop, let me do this. Good job. That's the right meaning for this suffix. I'm going to try to move a little faster here. This is taking a while. Uh, ish is making an adjective, right? And we, we use that kind That's of in right slang. for this suffix. Right? We, we'll, we'll, we'll turn any word into ish. Um, so, you know, sortish. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you, you definitely kind of see some of these uh, we, we use in slang as well uh, and kind of make up our own words. Also for nationalities. So Finnish, if you're from Finland, right, you are Finnish. Um, what's another one? Swedish. Swedish. Um, my daughter has been working on learning Swedish for some reason. I don't know why, uh, but she started uh, learning their language. So, you know, often you'll, you'll hear it in, 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 in that way as well. Um, I see is an adjective again. Good job. What's the right um, meaning for this suffix? Also used for nationalities. Icelandic, right? If I am from Iceland, I am Icelandic. Wise. Um, adverb. So making something into an adverb. We kind of use that like right meaning for this suffix as well. But remember, you know, an adjective describes a noun. So you think about nationalities, right? You're describing a person. Icelandic. That's that's basically an adjective. Uh, wise, though, will be describing a verb. Um, so, ward is also an adverb. Creates a, a an a good job or What's the right meaning for this suffix. Um, right, you think about toward, right, as a direction. I'm going toward the uh, ball later, or, or what have you. Uh, T-I-O-N, which is usually pronounced as shun, also creates a noun. Good job. That's the right meaning for this suffix. Action, right, is a noun. Uh, to act is the verb. Um, or, But if you're in the state of an action, right, that is a noun. U-R-E also creates a noun. Good job. That's the right meaning for this suffix. And ESE creates adjective. Also nationalities. That's the right meaning for this suffix. Japanese, Chinese, right? Um, we use them that way. IAN, also an adjective or nationality. Good job. That's the right meaning for this suffix. Um, Asian. Asian. Um, I'm trying to think of, of one where we really just add Italian, I-A-N, right? Uh, but we also use just A-N a lot of times, right? American, German, Mexican, Mexican which is not uh, a part of the lesson there. But uh, yeah, certainly with I-A-N, Asian, um, i trying to think of another. Ish, uh, also Spanish, right? Um, and things like English. So that's a good way to remember the adjective ones. Uh, a lot of times they're also used to explain nationalities. So continuing on that here. word to its correct meaning. Okay. Uh, I'll try to go a little quicker here. This is going a long time. Um, deafen, right? So uh, unable to hear. So good deaf, job. we that's know is that root definition. word. And that E-N is going to, um, you know, 
be sort of a, a, the, the, changing it to a verb, right? What we just talked about. So death uh, is the, uh, you know, noun. Death then is going to be the verb. Uh, matriarchy, system of society ruled by Good job. women. That's the correct definition. Patriarchy. Uh, we, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, sort of patriarchy because so, uh, men are often in, in places of power, uh, in, in particularly in, in the, the Western world. Um, but matriarchy would be the, you know, the opposite of that women in power monarchy, right? So archy often you know, describing a, a system of rule. Uh, and we talked about that, you know, in the last class as well. So archy, if you see that it's, it's typically talking about governance or the system of rule. Uh, revolutionary, um, causing a large or causing complete a change. Good job. That's the correct definition. And I mentioned this too when we talked about the American Revolution. You know, we often associate it with violence um, because of, 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 you know, political revolutions. A lot of times there's coups and overthrows in government, but a revolution can be peaceful and it's basically whatever it is, it's a large or complete change. So just like with the revolution, with the revolutionary war, we had a large change where we became a, a, uh, a republic and a democracy. We sought our independence. There's the industrial revolution, right, where we industrialized in the 1800s, uh, which is a large change across America. Uh, there's been a technological revolution over the last, you know, three decades or so. Portraiture is uh, oh, the act. Good job. That's the correct yeah. definition. Painting a picture. Um, so that you are E um, idea, making it into a noun. An emergence. Good job. Coming That's into the e. correct definition. So emerge, right? When you study roots, look for as many words as you can make with each root word. Here are a few examples. Look for more words that you can make with each of these roots. Amble meaning to walk as an ambulance or perambulate. A me, a more, meaning love, as an amorous or enamored. Anim, meaning mind or spirit, as an animate or animal. Anthro, meaning mankind, as in anthropology or misanthrope. Avi, meaning bird, as in aviation or avian. Claire, meaning clear or bright, as in Clarity or clarify. Cap, step, sieve, meaning to take as in capture, deception, or receive. Jur, juris, meaning related to the law as in jury or perjure. Jurisdiction, Tur, meaning earth or land as in terranium or terrace. Cog, as in cognition or recognize. Morph, meaning shape yeah, mommy, morph, or morphology stat stasis meaning stand as in statue or static verse vert meaning turn as in reverse or vertical I'm aware that words can change meaning over time yeah, mama, mama. the word audience comes from the root audi to hear yeah, we associate an audience with a group that sees a movie or play more than hearing it that's a change that happened in language. Words can even reverse their meaning over time. The word awful means full of awe, but most people use it to mean very bad. The word naughty comes from the root not, which means zero. It used to mean having nothing, but now it means something wrong or against the rules. Watch out for related words where the meaning has shifted. There's a longer list of roots in the resources. Find words that you can make with each root by brainstorming and researching. Yeah, so uh, that's another thing you have to watch out for, right? These roots kind of take on new meanings over time. Um, so that may change them a little bit. And that's why I've, I've been struggling a little bit with some of these. Um, but let's go on to the next Drag exercise each root here. to an ending that makes a word. So I mentioned this one, right? T-E-R or T-E-R-R, -R, right? It has to do with earth. Um, so that is uh, terraform. So if you're terraforming, 
Terraform means to transform a planet to become more like Earth. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've talked about terraforming Mars so we can so we can colonize Mars at some point. Term. Uh, so terminate. So, okay. Good job. Terminate means to end something. Right. So, um, you know, term, right, basically is a, a length of time. So to terminate means to end that. Bers, B E R S, is going to be versatile. We talked about reversing or changing. Good job. Versatile means able to change or adapt to different purposes. Right. So equi, be equitable. Good job. Equitable means fair, balanced, or just. Right, so equation equals, uh, we see EQUI or EQUA a lot. So, uh, you know, always means like either balance, um, equal to, um, or just. Um, equity, um, equalize, to balance. Jurisdiction, so of the law. Good job. Jurisdiction means the power to make legal decisions or judgment or an area where a body has legal authority. Yeah, so particularly with like law enforcement, you know, uh, local law enforcement only has jurisdiction over certain areas. Uh, you know, your, your sheriff's department, like the Franklin County Sheriff's Department can't go to Athens County. They don't have jurisdiction there. Uh, State Police of Ohio does not have jurisdiction in Indiana. Uh, corpore. Corporeal. Corporeal. Good job. Corporeal Cor means corporeal. related to having a physical body. Yes. Um, C-L-A-R. So clarification. Good job. Clarification means the act of making something clearer. Right. So anytime you see C-L-A-R, it's to be clear, right? So clarity. Clarification. And then our word for sound. Good job. Auditorium means a building used for gatherings or performances where an audience sees and hears an event. Right. So particularly auditoriums uh, are usually made to enhance sound from the stage, right? There's uh, you know, certain uh, acoustic materials that they'll, they'll use on the walls, and things like that. So sound will travel in a certain direction and not bounce off the walls. Anim, animosity. Good job. Animosity means anger or hostility and comes from a word that once meant spirit or courage. And that's one that has changed quite a bit and can have a lot of different meanings. So animate, right? If you animate something, it means you're sort of bringing to life. Um, so somewhat connected to the idea of spirit or courage, um, but uh, a little, you know, different there. Animatronics, right? Uh, if you go to Disney World, uh, you know, Walt Disney built a lot of sort of robotic looking people that are animatronics, uh, automatons, stuff like that. Uh, captivate. Good job. Captivate means to attract someone or hold someone's attention. Right. To hold something, right? Capture, captivity. Right. If you're in captivity, if you've been captured, um, then someone is is holding you, basically. OK, and we'll go on here. Last set. So now it's time to show that. You've oh, learned wait, this. let's go this. Uh, not yet. Drag each word to go. its correct meaning. Mono meaning one. So monochrome is having one collar. Um, the monochrome look uh, in the early 2000s. That's the correct where definition. Uh, I, I, you know, my, my suit and, and tie and everything were the same collar. My, my shirt and my tie were the same collar. That's the monochrome look. Uh, sophisticated. So that is worldly knowledge and experience. Good job. That's the correct definition. Complex. Ambulant, right? Able to walk around. So he mentioned perambulate. That's the correct definition. That was what I was thinking of earlier. Um, uh, you know, if you're ambulatory, 
that means you can get up and you can walk around. You're not, you know, wheelchair bound or something like that. Uh, perambulate, uh, they often use uh, with uh, puppets and marionettes. Like if you were, if you're perambulating, you're you're moving them around. So that uh, that prefix per, um, which means across or through. So if you're perambulating, you're moving you're walking across or through a building or something like that, perambulating, it's a fancy word. Um, pacify, to make calm. Good job, that's the correct definition. Right, um, you know you all have little ones. I had a little one at one time, it's not so little anymore. Uh, and she never much cared for a pacifier, right? So. Why don't we give them pacifiers to make them calm? Uh, philanthropic, doing goods or charitable work. Good job. That's the correct definition. Uh, philanthropy, right? I, I talked about uh, guys like uh, um, uh, Andrew Carnegie and Nelson Rockefeller. Uh, they were the richest people on earth back in the 1800s and 1900s, but they were big philanthropists too. They set up a lot of charitable works. So now we finally get to and the, the now actual time exercise. To show that you've learned this concept. Try some practice problems to demonstrate your understanding. There are eight questions total, but first, I'll show you three questions. If you get all of the first three questions correct, that demonstrates to me that you understand this lesson and that you can move on. Otherwise, keep going and answer the rest of the questions. Okay. If you miss any questions, try clicking review. I don't know why I always wind up listening to him. Uh, the the eight questions are just drag and drop in in uh, you know finding definitions. So you know no more work with the suffixes or the prefix endings. It's just understanding the definitions. So um, would you guys take about ten minutes. You know, it might be a little short. Um, there's only about four definitions per choice. See how you do. Um, but at about 2.45, we'll go ahead and, and we'll work through the, um, the rest together if you don't get finished. So um, go ahead and see how many you can get through on your own there. Hey, I'm um, Matt. Yeah. So I'm about to pick up my daughter from school. Is it okay if I do the assignment later? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And of course, this will be posted on okay, Google Classroom you. if you need any help later too. So, yep, go for it. Okay, thank you. No problem.
All right, let's go ahead and start looking at these uh, and try to work through them a little quickly here because we're getting pretty close to the end of class. Um, so, interminable is never ending. So, we think about term, T E R M, we talked about terminate, right? It's having a period of time. Interminable means that's never ending. I N and A B L E combines to make interminable. Dejected is sad or depressed. Visualize, right? Form a mental image. So visual is your root, right? And that's, you know, that's gonna be a verb. So, and an equivalent. So equi is our, is our root there being equal or balanced, right? So, equivalent is going to have the same value that's equivalent to you know this uh cup of water is equivalent to eight ounces right uh probably um or close to so uh and yeah so we have three adjectives here um able forming an adjective e n t forming an adjective um e d and d e forming an adjective and then i z e forming a verb yeah, and see there, it, it gives us how those parts come together. Now here, we have a few that have, uh, in this case, uh, interminable. Uh, we mentioned might have multiple suffixes or multiple prefixes. So we do have two suffixes on interminable to make never ending. So, okay. Um, omnipresent, right? Omni being everywhere, all. Um, so that is um, common found everywhere. It is omnipresent, found everywhere. Um, like, you know, talked about, you know, often when we talk about gods, deities, um, uh, you know, the, they're often omnipresent because they're found everywhere. Uh, primarily means mainly. Tactful, sensitive in dealing with others. T A C T is the root there, and relating to a large group or company is corporate. Right. So um, tactful, full. Right. Is is you know if you have tact, uh, and if you're tactful, that means you're well dealing with others. Uh, primarily, we have two suffixes to make that adverb. Omni, as I mentioned, omnipresent. Um, uh, the, the prefix there is omni. And then corporate um, makes an adjective. Okay. Antipathy, deep dislike. So, pathy, that's one we see a lot. Um, sympathy, right? Or empathy. Uh, is you know basically the opposite there, but anti as we want you know you know remember sort of like against so that is a, a dislike for something. Apathy is the lack of uh, feelings, right? If you're apathetic about something, it means you don't really care one way or the other, right? So it's got that a you know like amoral, uh, migratory, wandering, moving from place to place, civilian. A person not in the armed services and convoluted is complex or twisted. Um, so again, we have two suffixes, migratory, uh, civilian. We just talked about civics, right? That's basically by, uh, about the people. Um, so if you see civi or civics or civil, it's usually meaning the people or the common people, sort of like demos. Um uh, convoluted, just like that word, um, we have a prefix and a suffix there to make an adjective. And antipathy, as I mentioned, um, so anytime you see, uh, you know, path, uh, it's typically meaning, you know, something to do with feelings um, or, or pathy. Uh, and then, you know, whatever the, the, the prefix is, is, is going to greatly modify that word. So antipathy, meaning a dislike of something. Uh, apathy, meaning uh, uh, indifference towards it, and sympathy or empathy means a, a connection to it. 
Okay, and you're doing very well. Okay, let's you go ahead and finish this up quick here. Semi-annual, so occurring twice in a year. Um, so half, right? So semi. Sustainable, able to be maintained, right? So sustained, sustained, that's a verb to keep maintaining something. Adjective, though, is a, the ability to maintain that. Benefactor, a person who gives money or help to another. We didn't mention Benny, which is kind of the opposite of Mal, right? So if you see B-E-N-E -E or B-E-N-I in a word, that's usually meaning good, right, or um, neutral or happy. Verify. Well, we, we talked about this, right, to make sure something is true or accurate. Okay. And okay, um, transversal to um, oh, that's a line, that's a line that crosses through a system of lines. Invoke is to call upon, appeal to, not to be confused with evoke. If you evoke, you're, you're um, uh, appealing to somebody's emotions. Uh, invoking is to call upon, uh, like you invoke uh, the, the, uh, the, your Fifth Amendment or something like that. Aviary, that's a birdcage. So anytime you see AVI, that's dealing with flight or birds. Avionics, aviation, um, um, and of course, aviary is going to deal with birds. Asymmetry, without symmetry, lacking symmetry. Our faces are not, they are asymmetrical. Your face on one side is not the same as your face on the other side. There's been this app or uh, a filter I keep seeing on Instagram where you can you can cut, you can see how your face lines up and you actually look different. If you use the one side of your face to make both sides, you will not look like the same person. Um, okay. Reanimate actually mentioned this, right? Uh, to bring back to life. Re means a reflection uh dishearten um to cause a loss of confidence reflective throwing back light or other waves right so re is the um prefix and pseudonym right a false name such as used by an author which i mentioned earlier okay and last one here quickly circumvent so we talked about going around um so that is to find a way around uh if you circumvent the law right you're finding a way around the law equality right the state of being the same container an object that holds something and dysfunction, a wrong or abnormal action in the body. It doesn't have to just be the body. Uh, we talked about like, you know, dysfunctional family or things like that. So it's just wrong or abnormal action or, or uh, state of being, I should say. All right, enlighten, um, to give knowledge. A porter. Right, so we talked about ER, right? Usually it, uh, refers to somebody's job. So that's a person whose job is to carry bags. Eulogy, a speech saying good things about someone. Um, usually a, a eulogy is, is, of course, it is a speech saying good things about someone, but it's usually a, a dead person. It's usually somebody that's just died. A eulogy is usually given at their funeral. Uh, and convert is to change, right? Vert, remember, a reversal. We're moving in a different direction. So there's the final one. Then that was a long lesson.
Um, Thank you for finishing the lesson. Involved. I hope that you learned more prefixes, suffixes, and roots. All right, we don't have to listen to that. Um, so, you know, the best way to go about it, if you're if you're exposed to a root, you know, find words that you know related to that root or use that root. And it's the same thing with prefixes or suffixes. We're all familiar with words. Um, you know, some of these are, are very, very common. Some of these maybe not so much, but we certainly see them quite a bit in our day-to-day -day lives. So you can certainly through association um, start remembering some of these. Um, but again, that really helps us understand our language. Uh, and it's another way, just like context clues, that if you're not sure about the definition of a word, and um, you can come to a, a, a definition. Um, so that's all I got. Um, any questions before we take a break here for the day and meet back tomorrow? All right. So in that case, let's go ahead. We'll meet back tomorrow to finish up our civics and government. We talked about MAPSUM at 1215. Um, and then I think for language arts tomorrow, um, I don't remember offhand what's planned, um, but we'll have to take a look. Um, but it will be in language arts instead of reading. So you guys have a good afternoon, and I will see you all tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.